Yeah, so this is a computer hardware uh, topic two. So uh, definition: these are the physical parts or the tangible parts of the computer. Mm, that's the keyboard. Anything you can see and touch, uh, physical parts, keyboard, mouse, printers. Those are what we refer to as a hardware. Uh, uh, then we also have a, hardware is classified into five categories. We have input devices, central processing unit, output devices, uh, storage devices, and uh, communication uh, devices. Uh, this is now a diagram of uh, how they are classified. We have the uh, data coming from this side. It comes through this for processing. So this part is the CPU part for processing, uh, which has the storage section and the CPU section. These are parts of the CPU which we'll be discussing later on in this video. And then this is the part of the storage which we shall also be discussing in this video. Then we now have the output. Mm, this is now the, the pathway of uh, how processing happens. Mm. Let's start with input devices. Uh, they are also into categories. We have pointing devices uh, like a light pen, touch pad, touch screen, and the normal mouse. They fall under pointing devices. Category two of input devices are keying devices like the keyboard, the keypad. Those are keying devices. Category three are uh, data capture uh, like scanners, cameras. They fall under data capture. Then we also have speech recognition, uh, like a microphone. Uh, all these are falling under input devices. Mm. Uh, so we can start with the mouse. Uh, the mouse has types. We have mechanical mouse, optical mouse, wireless mouse, and the trackball mouse. These are types of uh, the mouse you will find in an office. Uh, mechanical use a ball. Uh, a rubber ball at the bottom for movements. Uh, uh, so it moves on the table. You also can buy a, a mat uh, for placing the mouse. It falls under mechanical mouse. We also have the common one, which is the optical mouse, which uses light LED sensor for movements. Uh, it's very common nowadays, the optical mouse. Uh, more better than the mechanical because of uh, issues to do with the dust. This one is not affected by dust uh, for movements. Mm. Wireless mouse are also very common. These ones are they come in two types. We have the infrared kind and the radio frequency kind. Uh, these ones they use a battery and, uh, and a sensor to connect this to the CPU, then the mouse will now be able to, to work. Uh, the mouse has a battery which uh, you have to, to charge or uh, replace by uh, replace the batteries. Mm. So two types, infrared and others that other mouse, kind of mouse that use radio frequency. Trackball is also another type of mouse. Uh, also has a ball on the side. Uh, you can use bo uh, two fingers for movements. Uh, it's used for even drawing. Uh, drawing anything complex, this mouse is good because it's able to make movements that are uh, more complex. Advantages of the mouse. These are advantages. They are not expensive. They are convenient to use. Modern softwares will uh, always have that, uh, so it's also very easy to use. Mm, the positioning on the table is also very convenient for the mouse. Uh, however, we also have disadvantages where some cases, some uh, you may prefer not using the mouse. Uh, if you are not having any flat surface around, you may not want to to use the mouse. Uh, also issues to do with text. Uh, you will most cases just be using the, the keyboard. Um, 
it just depends also uh, if you're also drawing uh, yes, they may not be very accurate uh, a pen would be better uh, depending with also what you are doing with the mouse uh, then we have scanners uh, scanners scanners uh, for capturing data from a hard copy uh, something that is already hard copy you want to convert it to soft copy or to a digital format you use a scanner uh, we have two types of scanners we have optical scanners and the magnetic scanners uh, so we'll be looking at them uh, optical scanners they use light technology or optical technology which is a light beam uh, that is passed over an object to capture that image uh, then it is now used by a specialized software to be out to now be able to be stored digitally uh, so optical scanners are three we have omr OBR and the OCR. OMR is optical mark reader. OBR optical bar reader and uh, OCR is optical character reader. <coughs> For OMR, uh, it works with uh, something that has been written on a paper, uh, a soft pencil, uh, which is now passed through a beam. So when light is passed over the paper that has markings of uh, the pencil, uh, it's able to capture that and uh, use it uh, to be converted to a computer readable manner. Uh, so those marks are now sen sensed and captured uh, by the infra infrared uh, light. Mm -hmm. So advantages the uh, so errors are not a challenge so it is also able to capture uh, data and it's uh, able to move very fast uh, and handle very large sums of data um, so when you also notice errors you can easily do the correction um, they are mostly used in kcp marking here in uh, here in kenya for marking uh, kcp uh, omr are very common Mm. Then we also have OBR or optical bar reader, uh, common in supermarkets, uh, which could be handheld or uh, products are passed through a, a, a scanner on the table. So we call them OBR. Uh, so they capture the barcode reader, which is uh, markings of uh, lines of different thickness uh, that are on products they are placed at the manufacturers uh, uh, at the time of manufacturing so every product has a unique code uh, which is now what you use when you want to place prices and the like uh, it's very common in supermarkets and uh, libraries we have an image here this one handheld and uh, we also have the the one for the table uh, so these are very common in supermarkets so we also have OCR these are flatbed scanners uh, they also convert hard copy documents or image uh, or pictures to to soft copies or to digital formats uh, it may even be something written by hand which you scan uh, very common in uh, cyber cafes uh, when you go there for a scanning of a night for a certificate or a document that's what you will get um, this is an, an image of a co very common scanner in offices um, uh, these are advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, scanners are easier to use uh, they can read characters can be read by people so it's it's uh, the errors are very minimal so disadvantages maybe it's expensive and uh, sometimes you may need someone who is uh, experienced mm. we also have magnetic scanners uh, these scanners use magnetism uh, to sense uh, uh, so the this is now different they are of two types we have the uh, that mag uh, magnetic ink character for reading a, a character uh, and then they saw the, the idea of a stripe a line which has a magnetic uh, printed uh, 
strips, uh, magnetic printed uh, markings on uh, on an ATM or a, a card for your workplace. Mm. So there, there. Let's start with the MICR. Uh, it is used for capturing ink that has been written on uh, magnetically on a on a card or a a document. Mm. That part has ion two oxide uh, that gives it the magnetic property. Uh, you may find it in checks, SIM cards, for phones, credit cards. Uh, a spot it could be a square or an oval or a circle that has the, the markings of that ion 2 oxide mm. then you also have advantages of that one we have they are accurate they're automatic they are very fast they reduce forgery uh, uh, those are advantages disadvantages maybe you are limited to the characters you can use and uh, sometimes if they are damaged they may not work uh, those are advantages and disadvantages then we have magnetic stripe this is a case of a line so a card like an ATM has a line which has also been written by mag uh, mag magnetically by uh, by the magnetic ink so the difference between this um, I uh, MS CR, uh, CR and MI the MI is a mark but this one it's a line uh, from one side of the card to the other where you swipe to capture that magnetic uh, data uh, also very common uh, common in ATM cards for banks um, advantages where they are applied they are applied in banks credit cards door passes those car, uh, parking they may have a card where you swipe to move in and uh, come out uh, for security purposes um, that's an example of MS CR, uh, an example is there, and a case of the other one also. Uh, this could be a door, uh, the other one could be a bank uh, gadget or a credit card gadget. Advantages simple to use, not easily damaged. Disadvantage sometimes you may have issues of erasing. Uh, those are now the advantages and disadvantage of uh, MSCR. Then we have the CPU, which we finished. The, those were uh, it, what we were doing was in input devices. Let's now go to CPU, central processing unit. Mm, central processing unit is the electric electronic circuitry within the computer uh, that carries out instructions. Uh, the circuitry in this computer that carries out instructions it has the processor it has the it's on the motherboard where you now connect all the of gadgets or uh, the parts of the that are needed uh, you also refer to it as the processor or a microprocessor a tiny chip uh, that is placed on the silicon chip uh, it's, it's a portion of the of the motherboard where you instructions are stored uh, we call it the cpu a circuitry an electronic circuitry mm. it performs the following functions processing data provide temporary storage for the ram permanent for rom manages the operating system we'll be coming to more functions of the cpu we also have a case of uh, controlling and running the all the peripheral devices of the that you're using with your computer all that is managed by the that electronic circuitry within the computer uh, captures instructions and they also gives out instructions and does the processing mm, those are the uh, functions of the cpu we also have more uh, functions we have a case of alu there's a part we will be coming to later on there's a part of the memory processing is done how processing is done we shall discuss this uh, further as we continue how access of data is done and how also retrieval and uh, a case of mathematics all these things will be uh, all falling under the cpu mm, so the the, the cpu ha cpu has uh, parts let's start with part one which is a control unit it coordinates all the activities uh, of what the CPU is meant to do, like uh, system clock, settings, electronic signals, 
fetching information from one side of the motherboard to the other side and con for controlling memory space available uh, allocating data from one side of the motherboard to the other one so all that is done by the control unit mm, another part of the cpu is the alu this is the part that does arithmetic <clears throat> and logical operations anything you are doing with a machine that involves arithmetic stuff is done by this part mm, logical part is done by this part uh, picking figures doing calculations giving results all this is done by the AL, uh, alu another part is the main memory <clears throat> which is the primary memory of storage of the machine or the computer uh, which is in two parts we have the RAM and the rom which we shall be coming later on so these are the the main memory parts uh, retrieving information storing temporarily to maybe do something other part of the memory may involve storing permanently even from the manufacturer side for anything you could be doing holding data or uh, just before or after processing um, or executing uh, information on the with the computer the memory has two uh, types we have primary and the secondary storage uh, uh, primary will temporarily hold data when your computer is on uh, when you, the computer goes off uh, if you didn't save then you will have to repeat but if you are saved what you saved should go to the secondary storage device uh, but when the machine is on what you are currently using is the primary storage mm. so the difference between primary and the secondary storage primary uh, is located within the cpu secondary is outside the cpu uh, primary is the more expensive secondary is less expensive these are now differences faster access time is on the primary storage side lower access time is on the secondary storage side uh, then we have uh, ram rom and cache uh, ram like i have said earlier it stores temporarily when your computer is on uh, it is volatile that's what we mean when the computer goes off then you have uh, everything getting lost mm. that's now the ram a major factor when you're buying a computer mm. rom is now different these are pre-recorded by the by the manufacturer uh, pre-recorded by the manufacturer so these ones are it's you cannot remove uh, you only are able to read uh, then we have uh, another, the third part cache this is a part of ram that uh, stores short-term memory it's a short-term memory of the, the stuff you frequently you frequently use with a computer short-term memory uh, what you frequently use is stored in the cache mm -hmm. like web pages that you visit um, frequently they are stored their passwords and they are in the cache mm. then you have buses and uh, registers uh, they all they also fall under under cpu so for bus uh, these are pathways or links uh, electronic pathways or links where signals will flow uh, types of buses we have the control bus address bus and data bus uh, control bus will uh, work with the functions and the commands you are sending from one side to the other side of the of the cpu uh, then we have address bus which will locate the storage the position you want to store a particular kind of data so positioning is the address bus. then the data bus will now is the pathway for where data transfer takes place uh, so control bars is more of functions and commands address bar is more of the location and then data bars is for data transfer uh, then we have registers registers are uh, also temporary locations but they are within the cpu and are and are, and are located in the processor uh, temporary memory locations in the 
in the processor uh, that are uh, to be used for processing when the CPU is now maybe processing data. Um, so that temporary location within the processor uh, falls under under registers uh, they are, uh, temporarily holding data for easy retrieval uh, by the processor. Then we have output devices. After processing has been done, we started with input devices. Then we now go to we went to CPU. After the processing has been done by the CPU, what comes next as number three is output devices. Uh, these ones are after you've processed your information, you may now want to to print or you want to view. So that idea of viewing results or output is uh, what you we are now talking about the gadgets you will use could be a monitor or a screen it could also be a projector uh, when you are displaying soft copies you may also want to print hard copies you will now use the printer it could also be music or sound which falls under speakers uh, then other for printers we have two types of printers they are for printing hard copies impact and uh, non-impact printers so Impact printers are uh, they use striking mechanism, so they are kind of noisy because they use uh, a striking te technology. Uh, so the printout may not be very good quality, but it's able to print in bulk, uh, though it's noisy. And uh, multiple copies is a very reliable. It's a very reliable way of printing multiple copies of uh, posters or flyers or magazines that are in large uh, quantities uh, that uses lighting uh, striking mechanism um, so the hammer strikes on the character and the, and the back is placed on the printer so that makes it have physical contact making it very noisy um, non-impact printers are the ones you find in offices uh, they are quiet the, the the print out quality is very good they use laser or toners so the technology they are using is a thermal or laser uh, they may use cartridge or toners uh, very common in offices uh, quiet some are very easily portable or can easily carry even for home use uh, they fall under non-impact printers uh, so there is no physical striking technology mm, or idea of uh, being noisy mm, difference between impact and an impact those are differences impact are slow they are cheaper use striking mechanism they are noisy they use uh, ink, uh, ribbon then non-impact are very fast they are more expensive they are quiet mm, they use a cartridge or a toner these are uh, the differences between impact and uh, non-impact uh, printers factors to consider when buying a printer you look at the speed you need in the office this, or at home you look at the nature of the reports you want to print you also look at the quality of the printout you also look at the costs uh, you also look at the volume how many documents will you be printing every day you also look at types of color you, are they, you need a colored printer or a black and, uh, printers all oh, these are types they are they are uh, we have types of printers that fall under colored and others are not colored mm, so those are the factors you consider when uh, buying a, a computer when buying a printer uh, buying a printer uh, storage devices uh, so you may also want to store after you've processed you've uh, printed and maybe you want to keep a copy so storage devices are some are for temporary others could be storing uh, uh, permanently they are in three we have magnetic uh, magnetic storage devices they use magnetization process to write or rewrite uh, examples are floppy disks uh, hard disks some of them are uh, under magnetic uh, uh, then we have number two optical storage devices they use uh, uh, laser light to 
to back up information. Examples are compact discs, DVDs, they fall under optical. Then number three is solid state. Solid state. Uh, these ones are, they use a chip, uh, it's like a flash disc, uh, hard disks. Nowadays are solid state. We have two types of hard disks. You have the modern one, which is solid state. And you also have the older, uh, which is which is uh, under magnetic. Uh, so like a flash disk, it's under solid state. And compact disk and DVDs are under optical. And then uh, the floppy disk, which is outdated. Uh, the old hard disk is under magnetic. Uh, 